Welcome to Research and Analysis. I am Dr. Kamran and in today's video I am going to tell you about how to do confirmatory factor analysis in AMOS. Normally when researchers adopting a questionnaire for their study then it is rec uh, recommended that they must run confirmatory factor analysis before, uh, before running any other kind of analysis for their hypothesis testing. So this is the interface of AMOS. In the first step, we need to upload the, our data. For uploading the data, you can see here a bunch of options you can see, and I will try to explain most of them in this tutorial. So in order to upload the data, just go to this option. When you click it, here you can see the select data file. So this new tab will open and from here you can select your data file. Of course, you are not looking for this data set. Go to Z file and from here, yes, CFA teaching and from here I'm going to select our data and then click OK. When I will click OK, data is being uploaded on this MOS software. From here, we can just uh, start drawing our model. So here are two options. First of all, you may select this option. You can just make a circle. And after that, for example, this is representing uh, one construct. And this square thing or rectangle, you may say, this is representing different items. Suppose we are having a construct that consists of three items. So this is how we can draw it. But if we want to move any of our object, we need to use this truck option. Just click the truck and then we can move any of our object. Okay, and then use this arrow just to indicate it. It's from here to this. This is the construct and these are the items. And after that, we need to add error terms in each of our items. So this is how you can draw a construct. So this is just for an example. This is one method, but I usually recommend the other method that delete first delete all these objects in order to delete we can use this particular option erase objects so now I'm going to tell you another method how to draw a specific construct so rather than using these two options what we can do is use this one this is very easy So first just draw a circle and then as our first construct consists of five items. So we are doing it like five times. Five time press, three, four and five. And from here we can just move it. Another important thing is if you want to move a specific object, we can use this track. But if we want to use whole of this construct, first we need to select this thing. And after that, we can move the whole construct. And if we want to change the direction of these items, then we can use this particular rotation option. So this is how you can move it. So as we are considering it, these are the items that are representing self-sacrificial leadership. In order to select, first we need to select this hand option. Just click this and from here we can just select or name it as SSL because these are the five items of self-sacrificial leadership. And from after that, I will open the list of variables from here. 
and from here I will select I will drag all the five items that are relevant with self sacrificial leadership so just select first one put it here and then second one put it here SL3 over here and SSL4 over here and SSL5 over here then let's move on to our next construct uh, which is you know our mediator psychological well-being it consists of seven items so we need to draw another construct so here are two things you can copy the whole construct and just then rename it as psychological well-being and select all the five items and in addition to these five items we can add by using the same uh, you know add item option so let me tell you again what we can do just select this complete option and then this particular duplicate object I'm oh, sorry it is not selected and one thing okay let's select all after that just you know because we want to duplicate the whole construct oh sorry okay when you want to duplicate just unselect this preserve option and just yeah now it's works but now we are not uh, considering self sacrificial leadership rather than we are interested in psychological well being pwb and in about these five items but for self uh, psychological well being we need to have seven items because we in our data we have seven items of psychological well being so we need to add two additional items and after that just select all the items and drag it over here like pwp1 over here sorry this first we need to deselect right in order to deselect all just click this and now it is ready to be you know we can put you know psychological well-being items over here in this construct Five, six, and you know seven, and we have just one more construct which is remaining here. But first, we need to move it upward so that we can have more space to add the third construct. So use this truck option, and you know, in order to move the whole construct, we need to first select this preserve option and then move the whole construct and just check it for next hour of our construct we have nine items so we need to add two more items in this uh, pwd construct if we are using this duplicate option but here is another thing we can also you know redraw next construct just click this one and then you know just draw a circle and then three four five six seven and then just move it again in order to move all this oh yes now just select this hand option just to rename it I can rename it as, as okay let me check it again what's the name of the item PE psychological empowerment PE 
And now we can select all the items of psychological environment in this construct, PE1, oh, sorry. Just select one by one and drag it over here, PE1, PE2, PE3, PE4, sorry, this has already been done. And there is a mistake. PE3 over here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's there is a problem with my mouse. You need to select PE3 and put it here. And then PE4 over here. And then PE5. PE6. PE7. But unfortunately, we have two more items. So we need to add two more. Don't worry about this thing. I will, you know, uh, I will make it better at the later stage. But first we need to drag all these items. So it's not PE8. First we need to select PE8 and then PE9. So now you can see it's look very much messy, which is not good. First we need to rearrange it. And let's make the more spaces. Okay, because I want to move it a little bit here. First I need to Unselect this preserve option so that I can move just only this PE. Yes. And after that, again select preserve option so that you can close it. And you know, this is the problem when uh, you know we are just making a new construct by itself, then you can see there is a problem in terms of there's a difference in size as we have used just duplicate this SSL for PWB and you can see there is a symmetry as uh, in terms of their sizes. So anyhow, this is a good experience so that you can understand this thing. And after that, in order to make it look better, we can use this plugin which you can install and in another video i will tell you that how to install these plugins first of all because none of our object over here should not be you know we must assign a name to each of our object in order to assign a name what we can do is just to name unobserved variable go to plugin and just click name unobserved variable you can see all of our error terms are named. After that, we can go again to plugin and just resize observed variable so that you can see, you know, PWB and, you know, few of our, uh, you know, items, they are, their name is a little bit uh, lengthy and it's, uh, you know, by looking it's, uh, you know, it difficult to read what actually written over here. So what we can do is, just to resize observed variable and now you can see now they are look better in order to look a bit more better we can just you know move these error terms so that now you can see they are look much better after that the next step is we need to covariate our construct so for this purpose, go to these two double headed arrow, just click it. Sorry, it's not selected. And after that, oh. okay, just one second. Just because the symmetric preserve option was selected, then I was unable to select this double headed arrow. Now I can select it. After that, I need to covariate our construct. Now it is ready to run confirmatory factor analysis. Just go to 
analyze properties and in that go to output and in output we are interested in modification analysis the residual movements and also the standardized estimates and after that we need to click calculate estimate so this is telling us uh, the folder where we want to save our input file so just simply put it here at the desktop cfa and save it okay this is telling me that we need to select another option it's better just to you know go to your original folder and save it over there you can rename it cfa ssl when you will click estimate so it has been run and in order to see how our results are representing we need to click this output path diagram so in this diagram you can see few our few of our factor loadings are higher than one which is which is technically impossible these are showing the values higher than one is because these are the unstandardized estimate in order to see the and standardized estimate we need to click this standardized estimates sorry when we click standardized estimate you now you can see all our factor loadings are less than one, less than 1 and the rule of thumb is these factor loading should be higher than 0.4 so while running confirmatory factor analysis along with these factor loadings we need to check you know this mos output file we are interested in this chi square value then degree of freedom probability level which is 0.000 and after that we are interested in model fit first of all this CMIN value, which is given here. CMIN, you know, degree of freedom. Then it's CMIN or DF. So in most of the time, in confirmatory factor analysis, we rely on our MSCA. Sorry for these background noises. Then. CFI, TLI, IFI. Sometimes we can we also add this NFI, RMR, and GFI. The rule of thumb is these, you know, these things: CFI, TLI, IFI. You know, all these values should be closer or higher than 0.9. And this RMSCA, this value should be less than. Point one. So this is how you can run confirmatory factor analysis in MS. I hope this video will be helpful for you. Thanks for watching.